Hello and welcome to Downtime Fun. My M1 MacBook Air review released last week attracted a lot more views than I have expected. I would like to say thank you to everyone who supported the video and provided feedback. It really means a lot to me. If you haven't seen the video yet, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. As a follow-up to the last video, this time I will try to play devil's advocate and will list the 5 main reasons not to get an M1 MacBook Air. I have actually been enjoying my time with this MacBook Air and it actually took some effort to identify some substantial reasons against getting one. Anyway, let's go! Number 1, you can only use Windows as your operating system. This seems to be a very obvious one, but I realize this is one of the main reasons stopping people switching to Macs. This Windows vs Mac OS debate has been going on since forever and I am not prepared to spend more time on this topic in this video. However, I tried to do some research and according to Statista.com and NetMarketShare.com, the Windows operating system roughly takes up 80% of the desktop market share. On top of that, I will say most of the corporates in the world are still using Windows. So there is a good chance that most people watching this video will be a Windows user. To those who haven't used macOS before, it can be quite a shock. The shortcut keys are different, so the copy and paste muscle memory has to be retrained again. File Explorer becomes Finder, and everything just seems very different. To me, I have used macOS many years ago, so it didn't take me very long to pick it up again. The challenge I am facing now is that I need to jump between using Windows at work and macOS at home, so I have to keep reminding myself which OS I am using when pressing shortcut keys. Another shortcoming for the current M1 MacBooks is that it doesn't have Face ID. Whilst many Windows laptops have Windows Hello, which is super convenient to unlock your computer. I'm not sure why this is not implemented in the MacBooks when iPhones and iPads already have the technology. Of course, there is the quick alternative Touch ID, but I still think including Face ID will be even sweeter for the, these laptops. Number 2, the form factor. Even though the design of the MacBooks are very slim, and it has an aluminium shell which has stood the test of time, however the design is getting quite old where the Air is using basically the same external design since 2016. So that's 4 years and it's a very long time in the tech world. This means that if you are a tech enthusiast and are keen to letting people know around you to know that you are always using the newest tech, this MacBook will need some explaining as it looks just like the previous generations even though the internals have been revolutionary. Next is the screen. It is an excellent screen with the good resolution and color accuracy, but those bezels are thick by today's standards. Again, this is back to the 2016 design. It also doesn't support touch and pen input, which may be very helpful for illustrators and graphic designers, whilst these input methods are supported by many Windows laptops. At the other end of the spectrum, if you are just looking for a media consumption device, the the iPad which is a cheaper and much more portable with better performance for media. The M1 MacBooks currently do not have dedicated YouTube, Netflix or Spotify apps, so you will need to rely on your browsers to do binge watching which is less convenient. Last but not least, you have to ask yourself if you feel comfortable using an Apple laptop at your local Starbucks, running the risk to be stereotyped as another Apple fanboy or fangirl. Number 3, Performance, Gaming and Graphics Intensive Work If you are a gamer looking for a good gaming computer, you already know that the MacBook is certainly not the best option. Historically, Mac and gaming doesn't go well together. It does play some basic titles, but don't expect to play the best AAA games. You will be better off with Windows laptop with discrete graphics cards such as the Razer Blade or the Dell XPS 15. And for the MacBook Air having no fans, overall CPU performance will be affected by thermal throttling. Personally, I have not experienced any issues mainly because my computing tasks are generally light, 
the most demanding task is to make simple YouTube videos like this. According to other reviewers, throttling will kick in when exporting 4K video projects over 15 minutes long with heavy color grading. 3D rendering or prolonged photo exporting will also have throttling problems. If that is what you need, you should consider choosing the MacBook Pro with a fan or a computer with a discrete graphics card. Number 4. Connectivity I have mentioned this briefly during my last video, but this is something quite frustrating to me, which is the Bluetooth connection doesn't work properly. At times I can connect my Bluetooth mouse to the air, but then after a while it doesn't want to connect anymore. The only way that I can consistently connect Bluetooth devices is to use the USB receiver dongle that comes with the mouse. And this brings us to the ports issue. The Air only has two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left, and that's it. This means the thousands of peripherals with legacy USB-A connection will need an adapter to connect to this new computer. This also applies to SD cards and micro SD cards, which are the staple storage medium for many videographers and photographers. This is even more frustrating when many of the cheaper Windows machines still have USB-A ports and SD card slots. Furthermore, as mentioned earlier in this, the screen is small, and for keen photographers and videographers, they will want to connect to a bigger display for better workflow. This Air will only support a single external display natively through a dongle which is not included in the package. So realistically, you will not be able to avoid a dongle life and it can be quite annoying. Number 5 is the price. Traditionally, Apple products have been associated with high costs. Some will refer it to as Apple tax. This product is a little difficult to benchmark as Apple is using their own arm silicon where we only know about the number of cores but there are no clock speed figures to compare to. So it is difficult to compare its value against the competition. There are cheaper options out there if you do not care about the form factor or the performance. Basically, if you just need a computer, you can do some basic productivity tasks. You can go with the Surface Laptop Go, which is around US dollars 550 bucks. The Nova IdeaPad, which is around 600 bucks, and Dell Inspiron laptops, which are also around 600 bucks. These laptops will also provide more port selections. So, what is the conclusion? Is there actually a conclusion? I think there is no one size fits all in the tech world. Everyone values different things and only you can tell what you want. To me, as I am making this video and trying to come up with reasons against the MacBook Air M1, it seems that there is always some sort of justification to the flaws of the MacBook. And it is really quite close to a perfect piece of tech. I can even dare to say that the price on this laptop is actually quite fair, providing excellent performance for a reasonable price tag. Maybe we are already accustomed to the price tags being driven up by Apple, but I do agree with some reviewers saying that this product is a rare generational leap with this M1 chip, where large improvements with performance and battery life came without a jump in price. There are still connectivity issues that should be fixable. That is of course if Apple decides to do so through software updates. There are also rumors creeping up recently, leaking some information about the upcoming M1X chips for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, which many of us are waiting for. If you can wait, well truly that means you don't really need a new computer now, but you just want to upgrade. As I always say, technology will always improve with a new release, so you can never wait for the best specification. But with this M1 chip, the performance jump is significant, and it is certainly a best time to try it out. After all, I really enjoy the user experience with this laptop, but it is really down to personal preference, need, and budget to decide if this is the one for you. Do you agree with my reasons? Let me know if in the comments below. 
Hopefully this video gave you more insight to the user experience and helped you deciding on your next laptop purchase. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care and see you.